smacking, cracking, and watching. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, we're going to be reviewing the movie I, Tanya. I, Tanya is a great movie about ice skating legend Tanya Harding. This film places us deep in the 70s to early 90s. You feel the struggle, but at the same time, they're delivering some real powerful comedic blows. It's drama-filled as well. It's dark at some points because we're talking about abuse. We're talking about not just what you think with Nancy Kerrigan. We're talking about her upbringing. Um, she had a hard mother. She had a hard life and a hard marriage. All these things that kind of mold you and can alter your path as to where you go in life know Tanya as the chick who skated and attacked Nancy White Kerrigan. I always say it's multiple angles to every story. In this case, um, the media made her out to be trash. Straight up trash. I'm not going to say what word comes before the trash, but fill it in. They also made Tanya Harding out to be this horrible bully. And I always felt maybe Nancy and I, like straight up, I always felt maybe Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding were homegirls. And they always have to make, uh, you know, the Conor McGregor versus Floyd, Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson, Jordan versus Isaiah Thomas, or Jordan versus Clyde Drexler. You have, you can't be friends in the game. They always make it seem as if you're always enemies and you're pitted against each other. And we find out, hey, almost like that One Room 104 episode where the two fighters hate each other but they're in the room kind of duking it out like hey how should we do this they're bunking together and nancy that's kind of how this was in the beginning the movie just confirmed that but tanya was the first she was she was brolic man she was strong she she did things that just gave she was just blessed with natural talent natural strength that you know some things you can't build in the gym you just have those muscle fibers that you're able to just do the things that god bless you to be able to do she was the first to stick it and execute the triple uh, axle. Actually, two triple axles. My bad. Um, I couldn't do it if I tried. I like ice skating. I watched it growing up a lot with my mother on the weekends when it would be on, uh, like, Saturdays. Or, and I just remember watching, I think, NBC. I don't know. I, it might have been NBC. But, I, you know, the names always growing up is Scott Hamill, I think his name was. Then there was... Yama, Yamaguchi, Christy Yamaguchi. I have to look it up. You're always forever, no matter what, when you're thinking about ice skating, Olympic excellence, you always think Tanya Hardy the, and, and, and Nancy Kerrigan, no matter what, they're forever in the history books. And it sucks because I, would ha I hate for the homegirl to always be questioned for that one thing and have that asterisk next to her name, right? The cast was phenomenal. Tanya was played by Margot Robbie from Suicide Squad. She's going to be in this upcoming movie called, um, oh shoot, anyway, it's going to be Queen Elizabeth, the first one. And... She's all, she was also in Wolf of Wall Street. The Wolf of Wall The Wolf of Wall Street? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, she destroyed it as Harley Quinn, and she really, really embodies Tanya Hardy. Dang, man, this movie is off the chain. Her mother, epic role, epic role. If anybody could outdo her, I really hope, because, you know, they're nominated for, like, two to three um, Golden Globes. I really want them to win and do well and come out victorious at the award show because at the award show because Allison Janney, I believe, plays her mother. Uh, she was believable. She was stern. She was funny. She was blunt. She was all of these things. When I watched the movie with my husband, my husband said, "Dang, that's you on the softball field. That's you when our kid was um, doing t-ball." And I'm like, "Look, it's a difference between abusing a child and." Knowing that you have someone gifted that is better than other children at that level. And that's how I am. I'm tough. I could see myself in the mother, no lie. I'm tough on my kid. I, I'm not going to front, but I'm not abusive. Some people just have it. And when everyone is like, good God, your kid is blessed like that. When people tell you straight up, hey, what your kid has. They're going to go somewhere with that. When, when you know they have it, 
And they can, I mean, you got you got a t-ball kid that can knock it to the fence, way out to the grass every time, and they get four or five home runs every game. I'm just saying, don't fault me. Left the mother her tactics. I felt it. I understood it because, eh, I'm just saying. But the fighting, the 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 emotional abuse, the words, your words can be deadly, and it sucked because she's always just been left. She was just, she just was her own person. She had her own swag and she wasn't able to get the first. She wasn't able to have the exquisite attire that most of her uh, fellow colleagues on the ice were wearing. Her, her dad straight up skinned a rabbit, man. How cold is that? Your dad knows that and she, she's used to the hunting life. How many of those little girls are used to that? Who, who could do that? Who knows a soccer wrench on a vehicle? I'm just saying. But this little girl was rocking a rabbit coat while everybody else was rocking probably means. They treated her as if she was beneath. Like she just never was there. As far as talent wise, she exceeded everybody around her. But as far as the aesthetics of everything, she just wasn't there. And it was just hard. It was a financial thing. And it sucks. Now, you know what else I thought about immediately when I started watching the movie? I thought, hmm, maybe it was just the times, man. Maybe it was just the times because would it have been different if she would have just went in it? If she had that talent, say some crazy booster with a lot of money was behind her, and you look at her different then. If her mother was all in the spotlight in this day and age, that's Lonzo Ball, right? Let me know. Uh, you got Venus and Serena's dad who got them into shape and now look at them. Gazillionaires and champions every right of the way. Do you seriously think that these elite athletes haven't did anything foul, shady, or corrupt? Come on now. You think Michael, Michael was going to games high as a kite probably, pulling up with a cigar in his mouth. I'm, I'm, I've heard nothing but, uh, I've heard so many stories of, People who say they met Michael Jordan and he was a complete jerk, okay? Like, jerk. You think Wayne Gretzky didn't have trouble at hockey events? You think Neil, you think the guy with the Live Strong bracelets on his bike, you think he didn't go through some stuff? What about Mr. Swimmer guy with the huge lats? I forgot his name. Uh, you know, all of these phenomenal athletes I'm sure they have been plagued by their past in that it has come to the locker room or on the field or all other things um shout out to OJ but, nope I mean such a talent such a talent and not everybody's going to be from the suburban privileged life some people are going to have struggles, unfortunately, but this story basically showed the rose that grew from the concrete, and nobody ever talks about that. Tiny Hardy basically was the rose that grew from the concrete, and she's still a talent. You can't knock her for what she did. She was brought. Nobody else did it. When you watch the routine on film versus the routine, uh, the triple X on, versus, like, go to YouTube and type in like 1990, 1991, uh, Triple Axel, Tanya Hardy. And it was dead on. It was dead on from the blue outfit to how she went out there. It was like a three minute routine. And she did that in like the first 40 seconds or something. Like ballsy. Most people would need to build up the courage and finish it out with that. She went out there, did it, done with it. And she still had two minutes left on the clock boss this film was done by craig jalepsi and i think he did a magnificent job he's from australia and i thought he brought something creative i love the angles like i said they you really felt like hey this is not 2017 you know how some uh movies they'll say oh this is 1992 but it looks like 2017 and people wearing 1990 attire you really felt like you were in her in the 70s, 80s, 90s. You really felt it all with the hair, the home environment, 
23 years young. She was just a baby. If you think about it, man, so young and out there in the public eye, going through all that drama. Tanya was in the dark regarding the whole situation. They were saying, yeah, we clown, but that's what we do as athletes back and forth. What was meant to be a simple letter situation turned into full on blows to the caps. Bow. This goofy, I want to be in the spotlight, Mr. I want credit for something, Mr. Living in my parents' basement, Sean. Sean, Heck of a character, man. Paul Walter Hosler, Hauser played the heck out of this person. It was an awesome, he was just awesome in this role. No, hands down. Sean, he, he, he embodied this dude. He tried to throw Jeff under the bus. Yes. Wee oui, wee. Oui. He set it up, man. He set up the two guys to assault Nancy Kerrigan, Mr. Professional Bodyguard, a.k.a. Captain Delusional. Now let's talk about Sebastian. Sebastian as Jeff's uh, Gilligoo, Gilligoo, Gilli- something like that. Her, her boo. Her ex, Mr. Uber abusive. And I mean, it was a two-way street. They both did their dirt. She did shoot at him, but he was quite extra. We hear about stuff like this all the time, man, with husbanders, you know, things going bad. And he played the heck out of this role. If anything, the assault made Nancy appear like your little sister who America better, basically America better protect. While Tanya was the bully who took her lunch. And Nancy gets the silver medal and is a poor sport. Yet this girl is just grinding, grinding, trying to just do just do the only thing she's known to do. The best line in this movie I thought was, I was loved, hated, and now I'm just a punchline. I was attacked by all of you. My goodness. In the end, all four guys got locked up guilty. On paper, they're the criminals, but in life, they basically made her... They ruined her. You know, they gave her a $100,000 fine, three years probation. But the worst thing is she has to resign and is banned for life per the judge. Banned for life. Wow. My goodness. My favorite moments had to do with the red velvet rope that the mother put out, telling off the judges about her low score. Tyler, Tanya, showing the coach what she can do. The mom at her door in the end, finally she says she's proud of her daughter and embraces her, gives her the hug, but dang it, this heifer's got a recorder in her pocket when she hit the triple axle, the rabbit fur, head burnt, to, head burnt, <laughs> head butt to the glass door and tackled this random guy outside of the practice arena. My goodness for the third time my goodness remember she fired the coach and then she begged that she begged to train with and now we got to see in the end they were still together that was magnificent that was cool and when she's putting on that makeup and it's silent yet she cries and then smiles (sighs) the laces the laces the laces yo this movie was off the chain. If I had to rate it, I would give it nine and a half out of ten. I think it was excellent. If you have not watched it, watch it. If you have watched it, drop those comments below. Let me know. Like, comment, and subscribe. And that's the effing truth. I right, Tanya. I'm gone. Peace.